Hi. In this video, I want to demonstrate the effect of electric field on a kind of flame and also talk a little bit about ionic wind. Actually, at university, we have a few students that they are working on similar topic. One of them wants to separate viruses from air using corona discharge and ionic wind. And two of them, they want to improve efficiency of a ionic propulsion system. And one of them wants to model the phenomena. So because of that, I decided to make this very simple setup at home and demonstrate how the electric field impact a candle flame, which is actually related to ionic wind. First, I will demonstrate the phenomena, and then we will see how to prove if there is a wind between the electrodes. Okay, so I turn on the high voltage power supply, but before that, here is the power supply, high voltage power supply. I put the schematic on the screen. Basically, it is made of an oscillator circuitry together with the flyback transformer. The voltage will step up and we will have high voltage between the electrodes. Now, the output of this flyback transformer is a rectified uh, voltage because inside the transformer we have a rectifier. But the output is not a total flat DC. It's basically a pulsating unipolar voltage. All right. So let me I turn on the voltage now. You notice that when I apply high voltage, the candle flame is distorted. Now I decrease the distance between the electrodes. We know that the electric field is voltage divided by distance, so the electric field increases between the electrodes now. And you see that the impact is very violent. Okay, so we have observed the phenomenon. The idea is that inside the candle flame, we have positive and negative ions. And because we have a background field, these charged particles, they will feel a force in an electric field. F is equal Q times E. So positive charges, they move one direction. Negative charges, they move other direction. And that's why we see that the candle flame becomes kind of two sections. One of them goes to the right, one of them goes to the left. All right, so now how can I prove that there is a vent there? I have this anemometer, which I can use to measure the speed of the wind. But because the wind that is created by that flame is very localized, and also the speed of that ionic wind is very low, this one cannot measure the speed of ionic wind. And also because it has electronics, when I bring it close to high electric field, and with lots of discharges that we have, it messes up with the electronics of this device. So this one cannot be used. Some anemometer, they use the concept of hot wire. Uh, with those, we can actually measure the wind speed, but I do not have them at home. Therefore, I made this device to at least identify if there is a wind or not. So of course, if there is a wind, these pieces, they move away, so we can detect it. We cannot measure the speed, but we can show if there is something. So I'm going to hold this in between the electrodes and turn on the high voltage. Let's see what we observe. We observe that these pieces of paper, they will be attracted to the electrode. Suggesting that Suggesting that there is a wind in this direction. I can repeat the experiment with the other direction. And we see that the pieces of paper also attracted to the other electrode. We can immediately conclude that there is a wind here and there is a wind to the other side. However, that will be a totally wrong conclusion. Because, let me I put up the candle. Okay, so now we don't have any flame. If I repeat the experiment, we can notice that. So I have the pieces of paper there. There is no flame. So we expect that the charges that are in the space, they are very few now. 
but when I apply high voltage, again these pieces of paper they will be attracted to the electrode. So, and the reason is very clear, because when we apply high voltage to the electrodes, positive charges will sit on one of them, negative charges will sit on another one. And you remember from primary school that if you rub a ruler to your hair, the ruler can attract pieces of paper. Basically, the reason that this paper will be attracted to the electrodes when I apply high voltage is because these electrodes are getting charged and it attracts the pieces of paper. So with this experiment, actually, I could not clearly demonstrate that there is a wind. It shows the importance that sometimes experiments may show some results, but the reason is something different. So you have to be careful. Okay, so what can I do? I will repeat the experiment, but this time I will hold the paper behind the electrode. With the same reasoning, because the charges are on the electrode, so I expect that this piece of paper will be attracted to the electrode. Let's see. That is correct. So all piece of paper, they attracted to the electrode. Okay. So this is clear. Now I will turn on the candle. And I will do the experiment again. Wow, the candle is now very, has a very large flame. Okay, so let us see what happens. I will also decrease the distance to increase the electric field, intensify the phenomenon. So if I turn on the high voltage now, What you observe is that the side pieces of paper, they will be attracted to the electrodes, and that is because of the electrostatic force. But the middle part, they are not attracted to the electrode. Even though we have an electrostatic force, but because there is a wind, the middle part are pushed away. So this is a proof that there is a wind coming out of this system when I apply high voltage. Same way for the other side. Another way to demonstrate this is to hold your hand here. Now, I do not feel a lot of um, heat. I feel a little bit of heat because of radiation. But when I turn on high voltage, I clearly can feel a hot wind on my hand because there is a high temperature wind coming out of the electrode. So with this, I have demonstrated how the electric field impacts a candle flame. I hope that you learned something new. See you next time. Bye.